Okay, so November 17th, we've got a Legion Go update, guys. An update to the update. A new, new update. Um, ben Meyer got back to us here. We're just going to briefly go over the things that he touched on. The first thing that Ben addresses is the time of the graphics driver release. Now it shows up in China about up to 72 hours quicker than the US or other regions. But he said that it is safe to use the drivers from the Chinese website. I know there was some concerns about that previously, so it's nice to hear an official response. When we compare the files, they're the same, whether they're from the US or China, and the installer file itself is multilingual or multi-language supported. So you're free to install those as they pop up there, but they will hit the China server first. And then the next thing he mentions is that they're going to go ahead and target the next Legion Space update. There'll be two, one in November 30th tentatively, and then one at the end of December. The one at the end of December is now going to be able to include Legion Space to provide you with all of your driver updates, which is something that they initially planned on when discussed in the previous AMAs. So it's nice to see that they're still moving forward with that. Something I was hoping was actually in the go at launch but here we are at least it's something that is continuing to be worked on and will be available hopefully by the end of the year the next section touches on their planned bios update while there is a unofficial leak version of the bios out that has things like being able to turn off or on smt or being able to adjust the vram to six gigabyte there hasn't been an official version with that yet so ben clarifies that you're doing this at your own risk if you choose to use that BIOS. But what they're planning for in the next one to two BIOS releases is one of the bigger requested issues is that the custom TDP mode is broken. If you weren't aware, it can go up to 30 watt just fine, but it does not go below 20 watt ever. So if you slide it to five or 10, it's still going to be using 20 watt. So it'll be nice to see that fixed. Then they're also addressing the micro SD reader. Sometimes it has an issue where the micro SD card is not recognized after after waking from sleep and so you have to do a full shutdown and restart for it to show up. We'll be looking out for the BIOS update hopefully this next week. We'll see. It would be nice to get that before Thanksgiving. And while the new BIOS update is going to include the 6 gigabyte buffer option, they're going to also be adding the auto mode that was requested by the community. It's something that there's a high priority to them to implement and that they also understand that we would like a ability to adjust the VRAM within Legion space instead of having to switch to the BIOS, which is something that the ASUS ROG Ally does offer right now. Moving on, another one of the biggest issues to address is the dead zones. Now, for some people, you won't even notice that this is an issue, but if you're playing first-person shooter games or racing games where you're using the sticks as a steering wheel, this has been a very big complaint, and it's been something that they've been working on. They just reiterate it here that it's still a top priority that they're working on and that they're reaching out to their controller vendor which I assume is the manufacturers of the hall sensor sticks but I'm not for certain. They shifted priorities here. They were planning to release it at the end of December but they're hoping to include this in the November 30th update. Next is controller mapping. There's no way to map any keyboard keys to the controller when you're using X input. You can only do that in FPS mode. They're planning to add that in especially because you can't really use the back button for anything besides X input buttons, which are already available. There are also going to be adding in the Xbox guide menu button. You can use that usually to like call up Steam and also call up the uh, Xbox app. It'll be nice to have an official way to use that. And they're hoping to have that at the November 30th release of Legion Space. Again, they're looking into maybe uh, adding some additional hotkeys for like Alt F4 and Alt Tab. It'll just make Windows navigation a whole lot easier if we have some of these things. Things. Ben is mentioning the other requests that we've had about adding the ability to create shortcuts or to have macros, which are just button combinations so that we could set up personalized hotkeys that do things for, in other applications. As much as we all wanted this to be included in the release, it is nice to hear that they are working on it and that it will be eventually something that is provided. And they mentioned something about the left speaker having 
some noise or static. I hadn't heard of this issue. The latest graphics driver from November 5th actually includes this. The graphics drivers on these kind of handhelds kind of cover more than just graphics. So if you're curious why the audio would be fixed with that, that that's why. Next, he had a section for fan coil wine. And I mean, this has been something that has been a big concern to certain people, especially because there's two different models of fan. It seems like one produces more coil wine than the other. But they're saying in that case, if it's whining constantly to reach out to their service department, and he gave the number for it, my Go personally does generate a whine after I reach about 5,000 RPM. So if I'm in the performance mode, that's when I start hearing a slight whine. It's not constant either. It's pretty intermittent, but fan noise has been a large concern. And so the community had also requested a custom fan curve and they're planning to release that in the December update, but it's possible this kind of thing could get pushed back because it's really difficult to provide ETAs for software. These are more like loose goals, I would say. So take it with a grain of salt. There's also been a request since the AMAs, which was adding in FPS limiter and they're looking to add 30, 40, 50, 60, 90, 120, 144. However, there's already been a suggestion here that it should be something like 30, 36, 48, 60, 72. And in case you don't know why, this is so that the frames are divisible by the refresh rate. This ensures that the panel is refreshing as much as it possibly can and ensures a more smooth performance. So then Ben's reply to Ronnie is uh, basically just saying that they're going to look into it. They appreciate the feedback. Back. Hopefully, it's something that they can implement here. Hey, hopefully, we get an option to set the refresh rate to 120 hertz. Then all of these values actually would be divisible, except for 50. Lastly, he's just kind of responding back to the last update post uh, from all of the user feedback. He make mention uh, that they're still working on the apply game profile improvements. I'm still not 100% sure what that is. I haven't really done any digging or testing into it, and they haven't really provided any more information about apply game profile. The next one says that they're possibly working to address issues raised with native portrait display regarding compatibility. I'm not 100% sure how they're going to do that just because Windows sees it as a portrait display under the active signal mode and that just simply has problems with, with older games in particular but it can be an issue for modern ones like Red Dead Redemption 2 in the Vulcan renderer mode. Then they're also looking into external monitor rotation issues. Um, I have have seen this on some reddit posts as well as if I try to hook up a dock and try to stream through HDMI into like OBS or something the panel is flipped and it's vertical so kind of unusable right now until I find some sort of a fix then there's a desktop mode which again I guess I'm not really sure about that he says that it's planned by the end of January subject to change I'm not really sure what desktop mode does or is any different maybe just improving the desktop mode user experience experience. Some users have also complained about the power light that it's distracting during nighttime. So they're going to be adding this feature possibly in the December update. A small issue about Battle.net icon on Chinese Legion Space and I guess that's been fixed. Also in Legion Space having the ability in the games library to hide or remove specific games. They're looking into the ability to minimize Legion Space to the system tray instead of being minimized to your taskbar. And then Ben said that they're working with their extended team teams to make sure that parts are available for purchase, including the controllers, because right now that is a big concern with, at least in the US, only having a one year warranty. And it seems that you cannot extend the warranty past the one year period through Lenovo directly. So it'll be nice to see that parts are available for purchase because without that and your controller dies, you pretty much just have a tablet at that point. And the community is asked about additional controller options, such as like a left-handed FPS mode, things of that nature, and they're looking into that. So that's pretty much it for the update so far. If you have any feedback for them, the link is in the description below. With this update, create an account on the Legion Gaming Community website, and then you can post or upvote other comments. They've encouraged us to do this multiple times. They are looking at this, so it's nice to see that they are taking in all this user feedback and trying to incorporate it in their updates. Whether or not some of these things should have occurred before launch and shouldn't have to require user feedback and it's nice to see that they are trying to do what they can to improve on the, what is currently there and hopefully in the next few months we'll see a more refined go experience what they may have intended at the release
release. So that's it for the update. Be on the lookout for a BIOS update possibly next week. And until then, let me know what you think about Lenovo's response. Is this adequate or is this just a plea to say, please don't return me before December? Let me know in the comments below. I think that the Go does have promise and it can get there as long as Lenovo sticks with it and sees this as an investment into a new market. So that's going to do it for this update and I will see you guys next time.